Stay excited. When you go to the nursing homes and you look at all the people that are sitting there just waiting for time to go by, they're literally waiting to pass away. One Christmas morning, we went to visit some elderly people at a nursing facility. And we came out of our car, and there's an old gentleman sitting there on the porch. And he saw us coming, and he said, the owners are not home. And I said, we're not here to see the owners. Then my kids yelled out, Merry Christmas. And then he said the D-A-M word. My own family don't visit me. He said the D-A-M word, and then he said, my family don't even visit me. We went to another nursing home, and was Lowell and Heidi's nursing facility, senior citizen home, and all the ladies were dressed up. You can tell when they're dressed up. Their hair was made up, and I looked at Joel, and I said, hey, how come they're all dressed up? And he said, it was Christmas morning. All the ladies wanted to dress up. So I put this gift in front of Barbara. This is just, I, I, I forgot her real name, but let's just use Barbara for now. I put this gift in front of Barbara. She was sitting at the dining room table. And when I put the gift in front of her, she went like this. She, she looked at the gift and she moved it to the side like this and put her head down. Then I looked at Joel and I said, the gift is for her. And he said, Barbara, the gift's for you. And I pushed the gift back in front of her. And then she said, but I don't have a gift for you. The nursing, the next place we went to, the lady couldn't even talk. She was sitting in her chair, just laid back. So I grabbed her hands and I massaged them and things like that. Folks. Nursing facilities need to change, not for passing away, place to pass away, but a place to really live it up. Folks, we live in a dying world, okay? It is time for all of you, each one of you who can hear this voice that is speaking through me, hear ye the word of the Lord. The word of the Lord is life, and we live in a dying world. You know, the title for the sermon today is, What is Coming? What is next that you know is coming? Based on the word of God, I can tell you exactly what is coming. And brothers and sisters, you let the Bible interpret itself, and then you use historical data to confirm Bible prophecy. It is 100% accurate. I can go out in the streets and tell the people I have Bible prophecy I can interpret by this strategy, which is let the Bible interpret itself, the word of God interpret itself, and let history confirm prophecy. This is 100% accurate. How often you come across any religion out there that they say when they interpret prophecy, it's 100% accurate. Right here, the Seventh Adventist organization has it. Brothers and sisters, it is time to wake up. It is time not to be lukewarm. You cannot be lukewarm. This is, we're living in a time you cannot be lukewarm. Jesus said, to, so as it was in the days of Noah, so also shall the coming of the Son of Man be. Brothers and sisters, imagine with me what Noah's brothers and sisters were saying about Noah. Mm, listen and think about it. When you hear this sermon today, I want you to think because it's not coming from me. I am just happen to be the spokesperson. God wants you to hear the truth, and the truth will set you free from your lukewarmness. Now, so Noah had brothers and sisters because in the Bible it says Lamech, who is Noah's dad, had brothers and si had sons and daughters. So that means Noah had brothers and sisters, and perhaps he had nieces and nephew. I wonder what they were saying to each other from keeping them off the boat. 
Think with me. Think for yourself. Little kids, when I asked the little kids, what do you think they were saying about Noah? You know what the little kids tell me? You get story time with the kids, tell them, what do you think Noah, uh, uh, when he was building the ark, what do you think the people were saying about Noah? You know what the little kids are saying? These are nine-year-olds, 10 years old, 12 years old. They're saying, oh, they think he was crazy. Brothers and sisters, if you tell your friends there's a national Sunday law that's coming, do they think you're crazy? Hmm? And brothers and sisters, Noah preached for how many years? I don't know, but the Bible says over a hundred something years. I can go into, I can be specific, but I'm not going to be specific. I'm going to tell you this, that his brothers and sisters didn't go on the boat. He preached a sermon that the flood was coming. They never saw rain before, but a flood was coming. He, he started building his boat. And the word got out, oh, there's a guy over there, let's just say in Redlands. They're building a boat in Redlands because a big earthquake's going to come or a flood's going to come and blah, blah, blah. And guess what? Some people went to sea. And you know how word of mouth goes fast? Imagine with the virus that we had just recently, in fact, we're still dealing with it. It went around the world like this, real fast with modern technology. Brother, Mizisi. Mizisi, we, we grew up without cell phones. We grew up without YouTube. We grew up without Zoom. But the, with the technology today, how many of you want to go home right now? Go home to Jesus Christ. Go home to heaven. Guess what? With, if everybody gets on fire and make it happen, guess what? Jesus will come back because the world will not end. The world will not end until what? Until the gospel of the kingdom shall be preached to all the world, then shall the end come. Brothers and sisters, how much longer you want to stay here? How, many, how much longer you want to pay bills or, or deal with masks and deal with viruses and pestilence and famines and things like that? What are we waiting for? Brothers and sisters, Noah's sisters and his brothers never got on the ark. What is Jesus' messenger, Ellen G. White, she's the messenger, have been saying about what to prepare for and what is coming? Well, you know, when they saw the animals go in, all of a sudden they saw the animals going into the ark by twos. Okay, if the animals just went abruptly, just, just going in there, okay, they could scratch their head and say, hey, the animals are going in. But when the animals went in by twos that were unclean and seven that was, by seven that was clean, probably sister or the niece and nephew, if he had some, said, mama, look, the animals are going in the ark. Perhaps there's something about this, mom. Ah, mom probably is going, hmm, or dad must be going, hmm. And then, hey, what do you think? What do you think? Bianca, what do you think? Pastor, what do you think? We should go in? They probably were teasing each other. Ah, oh, no, 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 no. He's crazy old man. You know, we never had rain before. We never had this before. Now the, the animals are going in. Okay, so they didn't go in. Then all of a sudden, the door shut. Boom. And guess what? Uh-oh, Noah, why did you close the door? He said, I didn't close the door. And now they're worried because the door is closed. According to Ellen G. White and the pro uh, Spirit of Prophecy, when the door closed on the ark, probation was closed. But yet, the rain didn't come yet. Perhaps there'll come a time that probation is going to close for each one of you even before Jesus Christ comes back. Could it be possible? Jesus said, so as it was in the days of Noah, so also shall the coming of the Son of Man be. So seven days before the rain came, probation closed. Now, in the very beginning, when the door closed, they probably went up to him, Noah, Noah, open the door. Why did, you, why did you close the door? He said, I didn't. After second day, third day, maybe they got comfortable already. Oh, well. Nothing's happening. How does it smell inside there with all the animals? Brothers and sisters, the Lord is talking to all of you. 
He's telling you something is coming. And already you're experiencing the craziest time on earth since the history of mankind. And the numbers of people who are dead is not even correct. There's so much numbers out there. Who do you believe? Do you believe this person? Do you believe that news? Do you believe, do you believe who do you believe in? We are in the time of the greatest deception of mankind being rolled out. Brothers and sisters, prophecy is being fulfilled in Revelation chapter 13. The image of the beast is going to make fire come down in front of the beast to deceive the world. Well, let me tell you, brothers and sisters, the deception, the beginning of the deception is already rolling out. What is wrong is now right, and what is right is now wrong regarding genders, regarding marriage, regarding all kinds of stuff. It's happening right in front of you. But because you're lukewarm, you're just like, oh, nothing's happening. Oh, well, look at all the things that happen. You're just staying still. Don't stay still. Because if you stay still and be lukewarm, God's going to spit your name out of his mouth. And a trial is going to come to you so much so that if you don't repent, read Revelation chapter 3. If you don't repent, you're going to be lost. Get out of your lukewarmness and get, do something for the Lord. Ask the Lord, what can I do for you, Lord? Every morning, ask the Lord, Lord, what can I do for you? Brothers and sisters, what is coming? We are in the sixth seal in Revelation chapter 6. Already the greatest earthquake recorded in history was the Lisbon earthquake. It already happened. Okay? Then after that, read Revelation chapter 6. In fact, I'll read it for you. For those of you that haven't read it for a long time, I'll read it to you. Okay? Let's look at your Bibles, Revelation chapter 6. What is coming? I'm going to tell you what is coming so you can prepare. Men, you're the men of the house. You need to know all this. And women, you need to support the family and the man, and the man support the woman and the family. Okay, you're all working together. Just remember this. Don't be like Lot and wait last minute to leave Sodom. Men, listen up. Don't be like Lot. Jesus said, remember Lot's wife. What? Remember Lot's wife? Whenever Jesus said, remember, you ought to remember. Remember Lot's wife. She didn't want to leave. She was comfortable. Lot was wealthy. He didn't have to work as far as I know. He hung out by the gates and checked out who the visitors was. <laughs> you know, if you read the story about Abraham and Lot, they were wealthy people. And so God told him to leave. And they didn't want to leave. And if you don't get the early warnings and you take the last minute warning, you're going to be rushing to get out of there. That's what happened to Lot's wife and, and Lot. So when the Lord speaks to you, start working on what you need to do to prepare for what is coming. So in Revelation chapter 6, okay, let's start in verse 12. And I beheld when he had opened his sixth seal, and lo, there was a great earthquake. That's the earthquake of Lisbon. And then the sun became black as sackcloth of hair, and the moon became as blood. That's already recorded in history. The Congress of the United States was in session when all of a sudden, around 9 o'clock, it became pitch black. So dark, so the roosters started crowing. The animals started returning to the barns. You can look it up on Google. You can look it up when it's the... the when the earth, when the sun turned black and the moon turned red, look that up, Google it. That already came. And the stars of heaven fell, verse 13, and the stars of heaven fell onto the earth, even as a fig tree cast, cast its her fruit at a timely time when it's shaken of a mighty wind. Brothers and sisters, the falling of the stars already happened. Okay, I think 17. It happened already. And the next thing that's supposed to happen, oh, by the way, the stars fell so much at Early in the morning, they could see the stars flying, so many stars flying across the skies. Then all of a sudden, even in the dawn of the morning, they could still see the stars flying. For, for those of you that see one star fly, you're all happy and you want to make a wish. But, but guess what? They had thousands, literally millions probably, okay, of stars. That's already happened. That already happened. So the next thing that happens, watch this, verse 14. And the heaven departed as a scroll... When it is rolled together and every mountain and island were moved out of their places. 
The teachings, a lot of people teach that the, the second coming of Jesus Christ is when the heavens roll back as a scroll. Brothers and sisters, when the heavens roll back as a scroll, let me give you present truth, okay? When the heavens open up as a that means ozone opens up, direct sun or direct coldness comes. Already it's been recorded that the ozone has opened up and closed. That means when it opens up, it has direct rays from the sun. That means extreme heat. And when it closes, or at nighttime when it opens up, when the ozone opens up, extreme cold. We had extreme Antarctic weather hit Texas earlier this year. So much so that it affected the paint industry and many of the, uh, the industry in the world, okay? Regarding paint material. Sharon Williams don't even have red paint. Okay, I can tell you a lot about paint industry because where I work, I, I supervise the paint division at Loma Linda University. Nice place to work. But brothers and sisters, it was so cold. I talked to a brother in, uh, in Texas over the phone and I said, can you tell me what happened? He said, I don't want to talk about it. It was that terrible of an experience. You can watch the videos of people just going crazy. The pipes in their homes broke. And freezing cold, people died. But let me share something else with you. And the heaven rolled, departed the scroll when it's rolled together and every mountain and island were moved out of their places. Every island and mountain move out of their places. That's some heavy earthquakes that are coming. Now watch this. In verse 15, and the kings of the earth and the great men and the rich men and the chief captains and the mighty men and every bondman and every free man hid themselves in the dens and in the rocks of the mountains and said to the mountains and rocks, fall on us and hide us from the face of him that sitteth on the throne from the wrath of the Lamb. For the great day of his wrath is come, and who shall be able to stand? Well, watch this, brothers and sisters, watch this. And it rolls into chapter 7. When the Bible was written by John, it never had chapters, neither did it have verses. So let's read as it rolls into uh, chapter 7. And after these things, I saw four angels standing in the four corners of the earth. Holding the four winds of the earth, and the wind should not blow on the earth, nor on the sea, or nor on any tree. And I saw an angel ascending from the east, having the seal of the living God. And he cried with a loud voice to the four angels, to whom it was given to hurt the earth and the sea, saying, Hurt not the earth, neither the sea, nor the trees, till we have sealed the servants of our God in their foreheads. Brothers and sisters, what you saw happen in chapter 6 in the ending part it's extreme weather. The heavens roll back as a scroll. The every island and mountain removed out of their places. Many ru men running to the dens or running into a building, literally, and saying, hide us from the wrath of God is upon us. Brothers and sisters, there's going to be extreme weather that's coming. Let me share with you this, okay? They had a COP26, the, the climate thing out in Switzerland. If you're not up to date with what's happening in the world, like, for instance, if you were into martial arts, you would, be you would be watching all the MMA stuff and all the boxing stuff, okay? If you were into racing, you would watch all the racing sports. If you were all into the um, boating industry or the uh, trucking industry or, in fact, the trade industry, you can see there's a big slowdown in trade right now. You can look at Long Beach. There's so many containers, so many ships that it's trying to come in. Normally, you see about three to five ships out there. There's over hundreds of ships out there. The last time my friend, uh, he said he couldn't count them. Why? Because I can tell you why, but I won't go into all of that. I wanna let you know what's coming, okay? Now you said, the man that says, hide us from the wrath of God is upon us, brothers and sisters. They're gonna blame God. They're going to blame us for not taking care of the earth. And it says all these things are happening. We need to shut down the day, a Sunday, to slow down global warming, to slow down, to slow down the emissions and all that stuff. Sounds pretty good. I'm all for shutting down any day of the week, okay? <laughs> I don't mind, you know, kicking back barbecue time with uh, vegetables and things like that. <laughs> you know, kick back, stay with the family, have more time with the family. But brothers and sisters, they're going to do that. But guess what? The move to shut down Sunday, they, they're going to choose Sunday, believe you me, because it's in the Paris Treaty and the encyclical of the, of the Vatican system that's part of the COP. It's happening. 
And you guys, are, what are you doing? That is all these things are happening. You need to tell your friends. I only have so much time today to talk to you about all of this. You need to start telling your friends. And if you don't know how to tell your friends, learn how to use YouTube because there are other people who are using YouTube who are preaching on this and you send it to your friends. If you don't know how to do it, ask the teenagers how to put YouTube on your phone and pass it out to your other friends. You need to tell people what's happening because if you don't tell the ones you love what's happening, they're gonna turn on you. If they don't know the truth, they will turn on you. And you don't want that, the people that you love to turn on you and start blaming you for what's coming. That's what's gonna happen when those of us do not comply with some of these laws. I say comply until it, until it crosses God's line of moral values, okay? You must comply, don't be a, a sore thumb, but at the same time, if it crosses the line what Jesus is saying or God is saying, don't do it. Now watch this, I have to tell you this. Extreme weather is coming and they're going to, I'm telling you, God is not doing it. Okay, the extreme weather that's coming, God is not doing it, but they're going to say, the worldly people is going to say, God is doing that. The Vatican system and, and, and all these other, uh, 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 and all these other Protestant churches that don't know the truth like you guys know the truth, are going to say, we need to worship now on Sunday. Walter White said, I'm not worried about the Sunday worship. I'm more worried about the Saturday laws that are coming. Saturday laws? Did you know in Rome, Constantine, the emperor that made the national Sunday law, the first national Sunday law back in Roman times, he also made laws. You can Google this. He made laws on Saturday that you cannot meet in public. You cannot assemble in public. If you can Google it. Also, Got to the point, he wasn't happy with that. He said, let's sanction meeting in private, in homes. You guys experienced that last year. No meeting in public, no meeting in home to a certain amount of people. And then the last law that Constantine created was to not be idle on the Sabbath day. He wanted you working. Brothers and sisters, you cannot even imagine what is coming. Whoever thought that there would be, if you never knew about the Holocaust, right now we know about it, we know history, but before the Holocaust, who would know that they would gather up Jewish people and kill them? Who would know that they would, like the French Revolution, or even in fact further back with Roman Empire, how the, in, how the Romans encapsulated or uh, surrounded Jerusalem and killed over a million people in Jerusalem? Who knew that would happen? Brothers and sisters, if you think them beating up on Asians just because of the, the virus coming from Wuhan, China, so they say, and they beat up on some Asian people because they believe some of the knuckleheads that beat up on innocent people thinking that this virus came from China, perhaps it did, but to pick on somebody that had nothing to do with it is, is bad. Imagine when they say, you're the ones that are not complying with the global agenda that's bringing our earth to its death. If you're the one, and they're going to turn, brothers and sisters, you don't know what evil is until you see it. And evil is incomprehensible. That means it's hard to understand evil because you're not an evil person by nature, even though you, your flesh is weak. But let me share something with you. I can prove it 100% that God is not creating all these problems. It's the devil and his puppets. Oh, yeah, he has puppets here on earth. Did you know one of my friends that left? Well, he's not my personal friend, but he left NASA. He said, I said, what? After 20 years, why would you leave NASA? He said, I don't like the direction they were going. I wonder what it was. He didn't want to tell me. Brothers and sisters, Lyndon Johnson, one of our presidents of the United States, if you study history, he said, and there's a YouTube video on him, says, he who controls the weather controls the world. And so let me tell you, the story of Job, it's the story of Job, you got to know this. Job had a, this, had a problem. He was a good guy. The problem was the devil didn't like Job, and God loved Job. And the story behind that, you should read it. 
Read the first chapter of Job. How the devil was able to send fire from heaven to kill all of Job's sheep. Now, Job was one of the richest men there. He had over a thousand camels. And imagine how many men and women you have to have to just take care of camels. Let alone chickens and let alone lambs and goats and all the other animals he had. But fire. A servant came running into Job's house. And Job and said, Job, Job, Job. Fire from God came down and killed all your sheep and your servants. I'm the only one that escaped. What did the servant say? Fire from God? But it wasn't from God. Because if you know the story of Job, this, God told the devil, you can do whatever you want with Job, but don't kill him. So the devil had fire come down from heaven to kill his sheep. Not only that, Job had 10 children. And guess what? The devil made a strong win to kill his 10 kids in the house. So the devil can do those things. He can do something to the weather to scare us to the point, to the point that we will follow the agenda of the globalist. I don't want to do that. I want to follow what God says. I want to be a peacemaker. I want to follow whatever it takes to create peace, but yet not to cross the line when it comes to God. Because guess what, folks? If there is such thing as everlasting life, you don't want to miss it. You don't. And Jesus, the story of Jesus is so real. It's only 2,000 years ago, a little over 2,000 years ago. And brothers, that's over 100, and, depending on how old the grandpas, 175, or was it 75 grandpas away? Yes, one of your grandpas was here. <laughs> one of your grandpas was here and grandma was here. One of your grandmas and grandpas was here when Jesus was on earth. Oh, man. Brothers and sisters, how do I know it's not Jesus or God creating all these problems on the earth? Look at chapter 6 that rolls into chapter 7. Remember, when John wrote it, there was no chapters, okay? So when it rolls into chapter 7, it says... To the four angels on the four corners of the world, it says, Hurt not the earth, neither the sea, nor the trees that was burning in Washington and Oregon and California this past summer. They didn't say that, but, you know, there was a lot of fire up there. I was up in Weimar this past summer, and guess what? There was smoke from the fire. In fact, Weimar was ready, getting ready to evacuate the college for those of you that don't know about Weimar, you need to know about Weimar. It's the best university when it comes to health practices and teachings. My son's going there right now, Enoa. And he's so excited. He's like floating on air. On his way, on his airplane coming back, he talked to three different people. He also witnessed to a two couple who, who, who he overheard them talking about diabetes. And he told them, excuse me, I heard what you overheard your conversation, but your diabetes is reversible. And he started talking to them. He prayed with them, also got their number, and, um, and will continue to communicate with them. Brothers and sisters, we know God's not going to hurt the sea, nor the trees, nor he, neither hurt the, what does it say in Revelation chapter 7? Hurt not the earth, neither the sea, nor the trees, till we have sealed the servants of our God. So guess what? All the catastrophe that you're going to see coming, yes, it's coming, folks, don't, don't kid you, is coming to scare the world to, to, to follow the mandate. Okay, so watch this. That whatever weather is going to happen, it's not going to be coming from God. The men that's running to the dens of the mountains, hide us from the wrath of God. It's not coming from God. It's coming from the devil. Because God told the angels, hurt not the earth, neither the sea, nor the trees, till we have sealed the servants of our God. And once the servants of our God has been sealed and God's people has been sealed, I believe the seven last plagues will come. Okay. But be reassured, Ellen G. White said, a messenger of God said, many will be put to sleep. That means they're going to die, okay? Put to sleep. Because they cannot handle what is coming. That's God's grace, folks. But he never said what's going to put those people to sleep. Could it be another heavy-duty virus that's coming? I don't know. The only thing I know now is right now, brothers and sisters, get as close as you can to God, and I'll tell you how. 
Who wants to know? You, you don't have to raise your hands. Who wants to know how to get close to God? Did you know God loves small talk? Oh, yeah, he likes talking to us. Many of us don't even listen for him. But guess what? He's talking all the time, trying to tell you something. And he's so excited about your life. Yes. So there's a text in the Bible called Proverbs chapter, chapter, ch- chapter 3, verse 5 and 6. Has anybody memorized that text? Proverbs, don't look at your Bible. <laughs> Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5 and 6. Come on, brothers and sisters. I need one person that can say that. You can say it? What is it? Say it. No, Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5 and 6. Yes, who said that? Okay, here's a book for you. <laughs> By the way, this book is the number one, Ellen G. White said about all the books that she's written, yes, of all the books from Desire of Ages, Steps to Christ, all these beautiful books, testimonies to the churches. She said if she was to give away one book, it would be the great controversy. And if our president, the Seventh-day Adventist organization president, just mentioned in a video that you need to get the great controversy, the full edition of the great controversy. And here it is. Come and get it. Now, I want to I see a raise of a hand. We're in chapter 35 and 36 right now. Does anybody here, the first person that raises their hand, well, that's too easy to give away, but I'm going to give you a question. Who doesn't have the great controversy? Everybody has the great controversy book? Wow, that's awesome. Okay, so let's move forward. We know that God is going to seal his people, but he won't create the problems that the earth globalist is going to say is coming or is being caused because the devil is setting up his worship day. Now, I won't go into that Subject, but you have pastor here and you have pastor here uh, or elders that can give this sermon or you can find it on YouTube. What is the mark of the beast? You need to know what is the mark of the beast. I tell people, I ask questions, even though the person on Amazon, I'm talking on the phone. I said, hey, you uh, heard of the mark of the beast. Oh, by the way, what country are you from? I can tell you what country you're from. You're from, are you from Philippines? He goes, yes, how do you know, sir? He said, I said, I can tell by the way you speak. He's on Amazon. I said, how's, the, how's your country with the virus? He said, oh, sir, we're in lockdown. I said, I know. They have checkpoints everywhere over there. Just want to let you know. If you're not, you're not allowed to travel to another place unless there's so much criteria going on with that. And in, if you don't know what's happening in Australia, you should see what's happening in Australia. Some people are saying what's happening in Australia is coming here. So what? Guess what? The number one thing you all ought to do is stay close to God. So Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5 and 6 says this. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to thine own understanding, because each one of you have your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him, it's God, and he shall direct your path. Brothers and sisters, throughout your day, ask God what he should do next. I, I challenge you. One day I was sitting at my desk doing the computer work, doing paperwork. All of a sudden I got a call. Elmer, we have a problem. Okay, I said, I'll be right there. I, I turned off the computer. I stood up, and I started walking to the doorway. And when I started walking to the doorway, I stopped. Then I said, Lord, in my head, I said, Lord, should I go? The Lord said, no, go back to your seat and continue doing paperwork. So I said, okay. See, sometimes the Lord answers you like that. But you must ask him in secret because the devil doesn't know when you ask him in secret. That's in your head. Remember, the devil tries to read your thoughts, read your eyes and everything. So you learn how to communicate with God without the devil knowing. So that time, I just said, I asked God, should I go? And he said, no, sit down. So I sat down, started doing paperwork again. Within five minutes, five to seven minutes, two guys walked through the door and said, Elmer, we took care of the problem. So guess what? I said, wow. If I would have left, I would have missed him going like this in the truck. I would have gone to the site and said, where's the damage? Where's the problem? They already cleaned it up. One day I was walking back to earth and I was walking. I had a good lunch. I was walking back to work and I said, Lord, how's your day going? 
I'm asking, I'm telling God, Muzizi, I'm saying, Lord, how's your day going? <laughs> I'm walking back to work. How's your day going, Lord? And he said, as good as yours. I'm like, what? <laughs> See, God is a personal God. He knows how you feel. He knows when you're suffering. He knows when you're happy. He's so personal with all the billions and trillions of things he has to deal with. He's an amazing God. You want to meet him. You want to go to heaven. He's got a promise. He said, the only thing you have to do is believe that Jesus Christ came to die for your sins. And when you make a mistake, ask for forgiveness right away. Don't wait. And believe that the blood of Jesus Christ is good enough to wash away your sins. But just remember this. The devil's going to try to make you think you're still guilty. Or that you're gonna, you may sin again or you're going to sin again. Forget what the devil said. Believe what Jesus said and trust him. And focus on what Jesus wants you to do every day. So you need to ask him, Lord, what should I do? What should I do? Ask him continuously, Lord, what should I do? And here's another story. i got to end fast, but the, I, this was scary. My wife gave me a text. Ladies, listen to this. And men, listen to this. But before I tell you that story, i got to tell you one thing. The devil's been trying to flip. Everything God put in order. Remember that, ladies. And remember that, man. The devil is trying to change everything that God put in order. And it's in here. So here's my wife. She's texting me. Something to do with the family, relative things. A problem. And she asked me a question, and I answered it. I text back, no. The answer, no. And then I noticed she texts me back again. But this time, she wasn't happy with the no. So she texts me, why you say no, blah, 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 blah. And I said to the Lord, Lord, should I answer this? Because I noticed it was more heated. The text was more hot. <laughs> I said, Lord, should I answer this? And the Lord said, no. I said, oh, but if I don't answer it. He's, then all of a sudden, watch this now. I'm not being sexist or anything. He said, be the man. I'm like, be the man? Okay. I didn't answer, so guess what? Maybe four or five minutes later, another text came back, but this one was hot. And I said, Lord, I think I should answer this. <laughs> and the Lord says, no. I was scared, guys. <laughs> I was scared. He said, be a man. I said, okay, is this what it is all about? Okay. I went home that, night, that afternoon. My wife didn't come home till about 10 or 11 o'clock at night. She's working the late shift. I'm there in the kitchen, and I know my wife's coming. So I sit on the kitchen table, waiting for her to just. She comes in the kitchen table. She puts her purse on the table, and she looks at me, and she goes, why didn't you answer me? And as humble as I can be, I said, because I asked the Lord, what should I say? And he said, just tell her. And this is what I said. She said, why didn't you answer me? And I said, because you were upset. I was thinking she was going to say more. She didn't say one more word. In fact, her face that was stern, all of a sudden went, huh? <laughs> See, man, sometimes... Your wife, or either or, may ask a question, and sometimes the less you say, the better. Every situation is different. You must ask God what you should do. You know what I did when she didn't say anything? I got up and I started walking like this. <laughs> and guess what? If my wife gets up upset, if she ever gets upset at me in the past, it's being, the house becomes quiet. I don't like the quiet house when the wife isn't there. But guess what? It wasn't quiet. She understood. I don't know how the Holy Spirit worked on her, but it worked. So brothers and sisters, I'm saying every situation is different. Ask the Lord what you should do and be as humble. Men, be as humble as you can. And women, be as humble as you can and understanding for each other. Love each other with all your heart, soul, and mind. Don't forget to rub their feet. Now, I don't want to put down yourself. Don't forget... I would like to start a nursing program where you go into the old folks' home and massage their feet once a month. You know what? 
the ladies in that, that nursing home is going to move all their appointments away <laughs> just for that massage on their feet. Pat finders. Anyways, I had a pat finder that said, you know what, Dad, I'd like to go to the nursing facilities and talk to the, all the veterans and I want to hear their stories. You know, there's so much things to do to help the elderly and things like that. But the number one thing is, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to thine own understanding and in all your ways acknowledge him and he shall direct your path. Okay? Remember that. He will direct your path, not you. You can get in trouble. My son asked me, you know, asked me, Dad, how does it feel to answer God and listen to God? I tell him, it's more peaceful. And one more text in James chapter 4, verse 7. What does it say? Submit yourself, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. How many of you want the devil to run away from you? I do. Guess what? In order for that to happen, you must submit yourself to God. What does it mean to submit? To give yourself to God. And the, once you do that, then you resist the devil. So, brother, what's your name? Sam? James. Zane? James. 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 You got a Bible name. So, James, I'm going to pick on you a little bit, okay? If the devil's tempting you, learn how to say no. Say no. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> you got to say no like somebody's trying to take your wallet. <laughs> Okay, crowd, church, when the devil's trying to tempt you, say no to him. Say, no. Oh, no, no, no. You got to mean it. You got to mean it. Okay, one more time. Church, when the devil tries to tempt you, whatever the thought is, say, no. Yes, that's it. But when you're walking down the street by yourself, don't say it like that. Because somebody <laughs> might think you're crazy. But you know, the devil knows when you go, nope. You know. But you need to say that. You need to practice that. Because God's word is powerful. Submit yourself, therefore, to God. Then resist the devil, and he will flee from you. God has a promise for each one of us. In John chapter 14, verse 1, 2, and 3, it says, Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God. Jesus said, Believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. Jesus said, I go to prepare a place for you, 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 you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, Jesus said, I will come again to receive you unto myself. That where I am, which is God, where I am, there ye may be also. Brothers and sisters, one of these days when Jesus comes back, we're going to be flying in the air. Imagine that. Don't stop imagining. Imagine, brother Musisi, and all the other brothers and sisters of here and kids. Imagine flying in the air and going, Hallelujah, we made it with <laughs> Jesus. Okay? And you know what I tell people who I don't think I'm going to see later? Like my brother saw a person who was getting ready to die. He said, I'll see you at the gate. Brothers and sisters, if I don't see you again, I'll see you at one of the gates, or at least at the big dining room table that God is preparing for each one of you. I love you all. Remember, stay faithful to God. A lot of things are coming, but the number one thing is be close to God. Thank you again for your time. Yeah. I want to give this out. You know, um, uh, who wants this? Uh, hand over there and the hand over there. Come on up and get it. And Sister Bianca, you need to put a video of your singing or, or a, a, rec, a, a CD or something. Gospel music, gospel music. Okay, brothers and sisters, I'm going to pray. Almighty God, King of kings and Lord of lords, your people love you. Lord, and we know you love us. Lord, be with the people today. Help us to enjoy the rest of the Sabbath and continue to be each one of us. And the ministry that this church has here, including their uh, online ministry, be with the pastors, be with the pathfinders, be with the youth leaders, be with each and every member. Father, forgive us. Forgive us all if we've done anything wrong. Lord, may remember May we remember that you love talking to us, as you mentioned. 
that we should seek ye first. And he says, seek ye first the kingdom of heaven and everything else will be added upon us. Father, thank you for this time. Thank you for this ministry. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you for joining our worship service. If you like our content, please click the like button and consider subscribing. You can also check our other videos on our YouTube channel. Please feel free to visit our church. The address is in the description below. We hope to see you there. Bye.